Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to another Witcher Season 2 video. The Witcher Season 2 starts this Friday, so let's go over everything you need to know before diving into Season 2 on Netflix. So we'll go over a quick recap of Season 1 and some things to expect during Season 2. First, really quickly, let me thank my newest Patreons. Thank you to Craig Boone. Thank you to Michelle Everly for the upgrade. And thank you to Noby Dupree as well for joining our Patreon community. I really appreciate the continued support. And before we get started, let me remind everybody, I do have a fantasy novel out now called The Crimson Gods. This is my debut medieval fantasy novel and in a little bit of dark fantasy mix in there as well. So if you're interested in medieval fantasy, dark fantasy, etc., please check out my debut novel, The Crimson Gods, available now everywhere books are sold. Also, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button as we're trying to rebuild this channel and let YouTube know that we are still here. It would do me a huge favor. As of right now, over 50% of people watching these videos are not subscribed. So do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button so we can get this channel back on track as we head towards House of the Dragon. So let's go over everything you need to know before The Witcher Season 2 starts this Friday and do a quick refresher. Let's start with Yennefer. Now they wanted to think Yennefer was dead after the Battle of Sodden Hill, or potentially dead, or perhaps just missing. But we did see in the trailer that she was just unconscious laying next to a tree. So Yennefer is alive and well, and she will be reunited with Geralt as well as Ciri this season. So we're definitely going to see Yennefer, Geralt, and Ciri form their little family, so to speak, in Season 2, I would imagine. Now, of course, back in Season 1, the main thread was that Nilfgaard was starting to invade the North. Of course, this is when Ciri's kingdom called Sentra also fell, and for some reason, other than just her being royalty and the heir to Sentra, the mysterious emperor is after Ciri. Now, we do know that Ciri is powerful due to her elder blood or elven blood, but is that the only reason Nilfgaard is after Ciri? No spoilers in the comments, please. And of course, the main face of Nilfgaard has been Cahir, so we have not seen the Emperor himself. And for good reason, answers are coming. Cahir has been kind of the lead to hunt down Ciri, even hiring a changeling to pose as Mausak, a man Ciri trusts very much from Sentra. Now, Ciri obviously is very special with this elder, or again, elven blood that she doesn't know how to control yet, as far as her powers. And destiny itself will still be a central theme throughout Season 2 as well. And they finally found each other, Geralt and Ciri, at the end of Season 1 after Geralt had claimed the Law of Surprise, remember? I did some videos explaining how this works, but it is big in their culture. He was to be given something from her parents, Dooney and Pavetta, that they didn't know they had at the time. And of course, when he claimed the Law of Surprise as he tried to leave, they had not known that she was already pregnant with Ciri. Oops. So with Ciri being Geralt's destiny and her parents supposedly dead, Geralt does become a father figure to Ciri and Yennefer a mother figure as well, as they will kind of form their own tight-knit little family. Both Geralt and Yennefer are sterile, so they couldn't have children of their own, and Geralt's was due to his Witcher trials, which I explained in a recent video. There will be a link in the description below on how a Witcher is made, why they get those yellow eyes and all that. And Yennefer, of course, is sterile because she chose to give up her ability to reproduce to gain her beauty, as we saw in Season 1. This leads her to become the sorceress of the kingdom she's from and force Frangilla, of course, to Nilfgaard, where Yennefer was supposed to go initially. And, of course, we saw in Season 1 with the Law of Surprise Invoked, Calanthra, Ciri's grandmother, had no interest in giving up Ciri to Geralt, and he initially didn't really care either. But in the end, when Sentra fell to Nilfgaard, she told Ciri to find Geralt, that he was her destiny before throwing herself out of a window as opposed to being captured by Nilfgaard. So now Geralt will try to protect Ciri from others and herself, so he will take her to Kaer Morn to at least train as a witcher to at least learn how to defend herself, but he will also need to seek out the help from mages such as Jennifer and Triss Marigold as well to help her understand and control her own power. Here in Kaer Morn, as we saw in the trailer, we will meet the remaining witchers from the School of the Wolf, including Vesemir, Geralt's trainer and father figure himself, who will become like a grandfather to Ciri. And of course, with no spoilers, the big theme of this year could be why the Emperor, as I mentioned before, is so interested in Ciri and capturing her. Is it just because of her powers? Is it because she is the heir to Sentra? Or is it something else entirely? I don't even think the Nilfgaardians like Kahir even know the real reason, other than that she's an heir to a once powerful kingdom they have just taken over. And of course, a big underlying thread is the treatment of the Elven race, as we saw last year. Yennefer herself is one quarter elf from her mother's side on the show, and this is why her father treated her like shit, as we saw in season one. When humans came to the continent, elves were pushed aside to the fringes of society, and of course we saw glimpses of that in season one, and this is a pretty standard fantasy trope that we've seen in other stories as well. Now of course, Geralt and other witchers are also treated like shit because a witcher is no longer human, they are essentially mutants, and they are seen as monsters themselves, although they get hired as monster hunters. 
Also, quickly to mention, this season we should have a singular, coherent timeline, as opposed to season one where we saw three different timelines that were definitely a bit confusing before they all came together during the last few episodes, and we saw the different timelines converge where Siri met Geralt in the woods. So overall, that's all you really need to know before watching The Witcher Season 2 this Friday. We'll definitely do some videos breaking down some of the stories as well as live streams. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to get everything. And as usual, thank you for all the support, especially you guys on Patreon. And a huge shout out to my executive Patreon smokescreen producers. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And of course, be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.